Good morning. We're so grateful and thankful that you have joined us on this first Sunday in November 89. Let's put our hands together and give God some glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing to be in the place of worship. Amen. And we are thankful for those who are here in person as well as those who are online. Amen. I just believe that God is going to do something wonderful and majestic in our sight because God always exceed our expectation. Amen. How many came with expectancy? Online, give me a wave offering. Come on, come on, come on. This is not just no ordinary, another worship service. Amen. This is time to magnify and glorify the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Amen. So why don't you stand to your feet with me? Let's begin with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we adore you. We love you. God, the earth is filled with your goodness. And God, we're so grateful and thankful for another opportunity to gather in your name, to tell of your wondrous work. Oh, God, to feel your presence, God, as you move in our midst. God, we thank you for your power and for your mercy, and for your love and for your grace. God, you always exceed our expectation. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because you are the creator of all things and everything that you do is good. So God bless everyone under the sound of our voice. Meet every need of everyone under the sound of our voice also because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. And God, we don't take worship, life, health, strength, nothing for granted because it's all is a gift from you. And God, you said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So God, we're going to bless you. We're going to magnify you. We're going to exalt you. We're going to tell of your wondrous work today. And God, we thank you for another opportunity to gather in your name to exalt you as Lord of Lord and King of King. We love you, adore you, and honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God some glory. Come on. He is high and lifted up above all the earth. Amen. We ought to want to give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. For he is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to give God worship this morning. Sometimes you know, we want to hype everybody up. We want to get excited about the goodness of the Lord, and that's awesome, amen? But sometimes you just have to get in your secret place, amen, and close your eyes, amen, and give God the praise and the honor because he's so worthy, hallelujah. Dig deep with inside of you, amen, hallelujah, and think of the goodness of the Lord, all the things that he has done for you in your life, amen, all the things, hallelujah, that he shared with you that he's going to do. Because we know our God is not a God that should lie. Amen. He is a God of truth. Amen. He is the God of authority. Amen. There is no one above him. Hallelujah. There is no one, hallelujah, that can do the things that my God can do. So we ought to give him worship. So we're just going to give him the praise that he's deserving of. Amen. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Come on, y'all. Lord, you are good. Yeah. You've been better than He's so good. good. I can't good. praise you enough. I owe, I owe you, you my, my life. life. Can't, can't praise you enough. enough. Even, Even if I try, cause you've been. Come on, y'all. So good. Lift your voice. You've been so good. Come on, tell them today. You've been so good. So good to me. Let's go right here, everybody. Lift up your voice. Lord, you are good. Come on. You've been so good. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. 
him this morning. Thank him this morning. He's been mighty good to you this morning. You ought to give him some praise. He's worthy of your worship this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship him. Hallelujah. morning is offering time and you can give your offering by putting it in the um, box in the back of the church the greeters can bring you an offering envelope if you raise your hand you can give your offering online or by text and I will be reading from a devotion from our daily bread it's June the 22nd 2022 and it's titled abundance meets needs and it's written by Kirsten Holmberg School cafeterias, like large catering businesses, often prepare more food that is consumed simply because they can't perfectly predict the need, and leftover food goes to waste. Yet there are many students who don't have enough food to eat and at home and who go hungry on weekends. One U.S. school district partnered with a local nonprofit to find a solution. They package leftovers to send home with students and simultaneously address the problems of both food, waste, and hunger. While most people wouldn't look at abundance of money as a problem, the way we do with wasted food, the principle behind the school project is the same as what Paul suggests in his letter to the Corinthians. He knew the churches in Macedonia were experiencing hardship, so he asked the church in Corinth to use their plenty to supply what they needed. 2 Corinthians 8.14. His objective was to bring equality among the churches so none had too much while others were suffering. Paul didn't want the Corinthian believers to be impoverished by their giving, but to empathize with and be generous to the Macedonians, recognizing that at some point in the future they too were likely to need similar help. When we see others in need, let's evaluate whether we might have something to share. Our giving, however large or small, will never be, waste, be a waste. And the scripture is 2 Corinthians 8, 13 through 15. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there may be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. So if you bow your heads and pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, please awaken us to the needs others might have so we can give the resources you've given us. When we are in need, help us to trust you to provide through those who also love you. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Good morning, Fresh Start family. Good morning. Come before you this morning because we have a card to be read to us from them. <laughs> from our pastor and our lovely First Lady. And the card says, Fresh Start Family. Never be us. Thank you, God, thanking God for you and your thoughtfulness. 11 2, 22. Church family. 
thank you for your love and encouragement to us. Our hearts are touched by your expression of love. We thank God for each one of you. With love and God's blessings, Pastor J.D. and Sister Kathy. Then the bottom of it says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 717. We just, we just had to do that for a pastor and our first lady because as the church family, we love you. Amen. advantage of that extra hour. Come on, come on, come on now. Amen. Amen. So we ought to be ready to go. Amen. And this is, uh, amen, going to share, uh, going to continue with the word that we were sharing last week with you. Amen. We're going to ask you, we take your Bibles, going to continue to look at the goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the goodness of God. Amen. Last, uh, last Sunday we was in the uh, 40, 145th division of Psalms. This Sunday we're going to pick up with part two. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter five. Why, why don't you turn to that with me? Romans chapter five. Amen. And when you find it, why don't you stand to your feet with me, please? Amen. For just a few moments here in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version this morning. Uh, if you're with me, Romans, the fifth chapter. Amen. Uh, King James Version. Going to be looking at, go read the first eight verses, and then we're going to extract part two out of there. Amen. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and that patience experience and they experience hope. And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So touch yourself and say, the goodness, the goodness of, God, of God, the goodness, the goodness of, God. of God. One more time. The goodness, the goodness of, God. of God. Father, we love and adore you, God, and we're so grateful and thankful for everything that has, that has happened so far, God. We just ask that you would just continue to move in this service. Bless everyone that's under the sound of our voice. Yes. Oh, Father, we love you, adore you, and honor you. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The goodness, goodness of God. Amen. And we were in Psalms 145 last week, and really the, the Lord is good, verse 9, and all his compassion 
and has compassion over all he has made. Amen? Amen. And so really we were talking about the goodness of God. And when we were talking about the goodness of God, we kind of shared with you last week. We said the Bible defined goodness in two ways. It talks about character and action. Amen. And then we would to tell you that the, uh, there is no, uh, the original definition of goodness is God. Amen. God is the original definition of being good. What God does is good. How God acts is good. His word is good. Everything that God does is good. Amen. And Jesus said in Matthew 10, 18, that there's no one good but God. Amen. Amen. Then the question is, how do we see goodness? Amen. We were talking about God's character. Then we say you see goodness in the way a person acts. Amen. Amen. All right. And so really we kind of talked a little bit about that. And really we find that in Psalms, you know, there's two areas where we're talking about goodness. Last week we talked about the natural blessings of God's goodness. And we look at his character. We looked at his attributes in Psalm 145. Amen. And then it goes on to tell us that in Psalms 145, 145, it said that David said that he is great, his greatness. Then he was talking about his grace, and then we're talking about his mercy and his compassion. Amen? Amen. He said new mercies he give us how often? Every other day. Come on. Uh-huh. Once a week. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Whenever he feel like he said new mercy he give you what? Day by day. Great is his faithfulness. Uh-huh. Then we were talking about his glory and might. Amen. God was saying that he's so wonderful and magnificent. He said that one generation. Come on, come on now. Are we going to pass it on? Going to pass on to what? To the next generation. How wonderful, how awesome, how mighty God is. Amen. God can't help but being good. Amen. Because that's who he is. Amen. And then we're talking about his righteousness and kindness. Amen. When we talk about his righteousness and kindness, he looked beyond our fault. Come on. Amen. Did anybody get what they deserve? No. God is continually giving us things that we do not deserve. And then we talk about his providential care. Amen. We said the Lord is my shepherd. Come on. He's our protector, provider, and God. Amen. How long have we been in this pandemic? Huh? Protector, provider. Uh, come on, touch yourself. Say, still here. Still here. It's only by the grace and love of God. Amen. And so really, that was God's natural blessings. Amen. And so now we're going to look at God's blessing through God's son, Jesus Christ. And that's where we are in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. The key verse Verse number eight, say it with me. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I just, I said, I just stopped there. That is the greatest manifestation of love. God demonstrated his love. Amen. You know, we talk about Kansas, well, we talk about Missouri being the show me state. God showed us how much he loved us in his act of giving his only begotten son. Amen. He demonstrated his love. And I, I underline that why we were yet sinners. Underline that. Because I think that's important. It, it, and that's important for all of us to understand that really we can't get it right on our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are destined. Amen. We are guilty on our own. Amen. The only way we can get it right is to accept God's gift. And I like that he said, he said, why we were yet, yet still sinners. So that means that no matter where you find yourself and what predicament you in, how bad you may feel, God is still there and wants to help. Amen. All we have to do is invite him in. Amen. He demonstrated his love for us while the, we were yet sinners, which is the Christ's death is the highest manifestation of God's love. Amen. Uh-huh. It says people do not have to hope blindly that God loves them. God has demonstrated it. Amen. You ever had somebody tell you that they love you and then how, how do they treat you? 
How do they respond to you? Do they respond to you in acts of love and kindness? Huh? Christ died for us so that we could come to him and find peace with him and become heirs of his promises. Amen? Look, 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 look at the scripture with me. Come on. Verse number one. Therefore, being what? Justified by faith. We have what? Peace. With who? With God through who? Uh-huh. Yeah. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ's death is the highest manifestation of God's love. While we were rebels and dis despicable, Christ died so that we could come to God and find peace and become uh, heirs of his promise. Christ did not die so that we could be made lovable. Christ died because he already loved us. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? He never stops loving us. Amen. He never stops loving us. And I thought that was such a good word. Amen. And so really, we see that. Amen. We see that God said he, Christ died. Amen. Because God loved us. God gave his very best. Amen. For us, for you, and for me. Amen. And so really, we're going to look at just a few things that have caught the blessings of Christ's death, which we call justification by faith. Justification means to be made right with God. Amen. And so really we find in, 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 in Romans chapter 1, starting at verse number uh, 1, it says, it says, justified by faith, amen, it brings peace with God. Isn't that a good word? Peace, 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 amen? That's a good word, amen? Because really we find that the unsaved person have, uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't have peace with God. Amen. Because he cannot obey God's law, fulfill all of God's law. Amen. And so we find in Isaiah 48, 22, it says, there is no peace to those unto the, uh, who saith the Lord unto the wicked. Amen. So really we need God to bring peace into our lives. Amen. And then not only does you know, justification, which is being right with God, does it bring peace, but it also brings access by faith. Look at that. Amen. Verse number two. Amen. How many know that if a believers, as believers, we can come to God anytime? Hey, can I say that again? Let me say anytime. He does not sleep. He does not slumber. He don't get tired of us. Amen. He said that we could come anytime. Amen. So access to God. And I think that's important because if we go back and we look at the old covenant, amen, the Jews was kept from God's presence by a wall or by, by a veil in the temple. Amen. The Gentiles were kept, by, kept from God's presence by a wall. Amen. So really we find that through Jesus Christ we can go directly to God. Amen. Tell him all about our troubles. He will answer by and by. Amen. So we find that we have Peace with God because of justification. We have access with God because of justification. Then it talks about, look at verse number two, the latter part. It says, by whom we also have access in faith into his grace. That's a good word, wherein we stand. Tell somebody, say, I'm standing on the promises of God. I am standing on the promises of God. Amen. That is such a good word. It said not, not, not only standing, but we rejoice in hope of the glory, what? Of God. Amen. Um, uh -huh. So really we find that, number one, we have peace with God, which take care of the past. We no longer hold our sins against us. Number two, we find we have access to God, which take care of the present. We can come to him at any time, and he will help us in time of need. Amen. Number three, the hope of the glory of God, amen, takes care of the future. One day we should share his glory. 
Amen. We should rejoice. We would, we would be boasting. Amen. So really we find that really justification takes care of our past, present, and future. Amen. And understand that God did it while we were still sinners. And I said, boy, that's such a powerful word that God commended his love toward us. Amen. Verse number three. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Knowing what? That tribulation work at patience. And patient experience. Experience do what? Make hope. And hope make it not a shame. And I'm going to stop on the not ashamed part. Amen. Because I know who I am, irregardless of what other people try to call me or what they want to say about me. What I know who I am, and I'm not ashamed of what? Who I am. I'm not ashamed of what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's the power in the gospel. Amen. God even said when we are weak, he is strong. Amen. The gospel is what? Good news. God can take us from where we are miserable, broken, tired, needy, make us healthy, vibrant, whole. Only God can do that. Amen. Notice what he said. He said, even while we're hurting, he can do those things. And I said, God, you are awesome. You are the only God that we know that can work miracles. Amen. Amen. Verses 3 and 4. Amen. It talks about the character. Amen. And we cannot escape difficulty, trials, problems. Why? Because we are in a world that's filled with problems. What created the problems? Sin. The devil created the problems in the world. Amen. Yes. I, I, and let me, let me put a plug in here too. Uh, the election is coming up this week. Make sure you vote, especially young people. Because the young people have, why vote? Why vote? Because so many people have given their lives for you and I to have a privilege to vote. Yeah, you don't like any, <laughs> you're not going to like everything about either one, any of the candidates. But you know what we need to do? We need to pray and ask God to tell us to make a wise choice. Come on. We need to pray and ask God to help us to make a wise choice. Amen. Verses 3 and 4 talks about uh, justification. There's no escape from trials of life for us. In this world, we will have tribulation. Amen. John 16, 33. But as believers, trials work for us and not against us. Trials build what? Strong character. I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I had not went through some of the things that I went through. Because the trying of my faith, Lord, I'm going to trust you, irregardless of what goes on. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to serve you until the day I die. Amen. So really we find, yeah, that justification is good. God made us right with him, but that does not e help us to escape difficulties in life. Amen. I found through my pain, it caused me to drive closer to God because sometimes the physician can't help. My wife can't help. My kids can't help. Nobody can help me but God. But God. And I said, Lord, you are the only one that works miracles. So why am I fooling around with everybody else? Why don't I go to the source of miracles, which is you all by yourself? Amen. And that's why he says that we need to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Amen. And then verses 5 to 8 talks about God's love within. within. What is it that causes us to sustain when things are difficult? We've been through a pandemic. We're going on three years, over three years. What's causing you to stand? How are you holding on? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Not, not only have we went through a pandemic, we're getting ready to have some layoffs. Amen. Huh? How many of you know that God holds your future? Mm -hmm. God raises up. He will put down. God opened doors. He closed doors. Amen. And then it says, verse number five, it says, for hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is what? Shed in, uh, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. By what? By the Holy Ghost that is given unto us. And I like what the NIV said. It says, God love is poured into us. Poured into us. Amen. God is constantly, when we want to get upset, God is pouring love in us. When we want to get angry, God is pouring love in us. When we want to quit, God is pouring love in us. That we don't give up. In our Sunday school lesson today, the question was, you know, what is one attribute of love uh, 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 that, that stands out to you? Amen. And I thought about the attribute that says that love never fails. I, I, I hold on to that. You know why? Because that to me, that said love always win. Love always win. If I'm always being lovable, irregardless of what somebody else does. Lord, let me manifest your love. Let me show your love, irregardless of what somebody else does. Because when we stand before God, we're not going to give account for my children or for my husband or somebody, or somebody else made me do it. God going to say, I made you free will agents and I gave you a choice. Matter of fact, I even helped you with the choice because I put my spirit in you. Amen. And once you chose me, every other choice, are, Lord, whatever you say, yes, Lord, it's all over. Amen. But anyway, God pours his love into our hearts. Amen. And I think that that's so important. Amen. Because, you know, it, it talks about love, which is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, meekness, and gentleness. Amen. You know, uh, Today, we're going to do communion. Amen. We're going to uh, rec rec recognize the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And one of the objectives of communion, every time we celebrate communion, we hear these words, this is my body that is broken for you. This is my blood that is shed for you. Amen. The greatest demonstration of God's goodness is that he sent his son to die for you and I. There's no greater love. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet with me? And with that, what we're going to do, we're going to take the time. We're going we're gonna, to uh, let's get ready to commune. Amen. Where are the sacraments? Sister Pat, yeah, thank you. Yes, I bring one up here, please. Thank you. All right. But God commended his love toward us, demonstrated, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. Amen. Which was symbolic of his body that was smitten before the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. He told his disciples after he had given thanks, Father, we bless you and we thank you 
God for this bread. I likewise will also give you glory and honor, God, for the cup, which is the blood that was shed for the remission of our sin. And God, you told us to do this in remembrance of you as we eat this bread and drink of this cup. We do remember your death, burial and resurrection. Amen. We're going to ask that you would take the bread and eat all of it. Mm -hmm. In the like manner, he had the cup, which was symbolic of his blood that was shed for the remission of sin for all mankind. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We're going to ask that you would drink it, drink it, drink all of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that they went out into the Mount of Olives rejoicing. Where's the greeters? We're going to ask that we come forward and collect the utensils. Amen. Thank you. Amen. The goodness of God. Amen. While we were without strength, God demonstrated his love for us by sending his son, amen, to die that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. Greater love had no man than this than to lay down his life for a friend. Amen. Why don't you bow your heads with me? Father, we come. And God, we're so grateful and thankful for this service. God, we bless you and we adore you because God, you are good. You are even better than good, as the song poet has said. God, nobody can fathom how awesome, how wonderful, marvelous, majestic, mighty, kind you are. And God, you look beyond all of our faults to meet our needs. Oh God, we adore you, we honor you, we magnify you, we lift you up, we give you glory. And God, you knew who exactly who we were. And God, you told us to come unto you all that labor and a heavy laden, and you would give us rest. That we could take your yoke upon you and learn of you because you are meek and lowly and humble of spirit. So God, we are thankful for this moment and we're thankful for all that you have done in our lives. God, we pray for those who don't know you as Lord and Savior. God, we pray that you've given them an invitation right now. God, all they have to do is confess with their mouths and believe in their heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and you said that we shall be saved. So if that's you and you want to make a decision right now, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I want you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and be Lord of my life. And Father, we pray and we thank you, God, that you send your angels to watch over them, to encourage them and let them know that they're not alone. God, we are thankful for your goodness and your mercy, God, that you give us day by day. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, we ask for your blessing to go before us this day and continue to allow your joy to be our strength. We are thankful for the goodness of God. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God, we thank you for demonstrating your love in such a powerful and profound way. God, let us be those lively living stones that you have called out of darkness 
and to your marvelous light. Everything that we do and say and think, may our lives give glory to you. Bless everyone under the sound of our voice. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen, amen, amen. All right, God bless you. We're getting ready to go right into our testimony service. Amen. Hallelujah. Ian, are we still online?